Hey guys, welcome to Digital Clay. What you see here is completely made in ZBrush. I want to show you guys how I create this kind of light and this kind of rendering setup in about less than five minutes. The first thing I want you to understand is why should you bother with light as a sculptor, as an artist? As you know, since episode one, in Digital Clay, we're after expression, we're after emotion, and we're after truth. So light is the vehicle of that expression. Light allows you to frame the raw emotion of your work. We're able to frame what we call the gesture, the spark, the main intention of the work. At that point, the, the magic exchange with our audience happens. Medardo Rosso, one of my favorite sculptors, he would say, what matters in my sculpture is that why you look at them, you forget the material. So you forget about anything else. So the, the pure sensitivity of, of the artist comes through. The bottom line is light is sculpture and we must learn to use it the same way we use our clay. This is, uh, this is what we did in the first episodes of Digital Clay. This is our Digital Clay Man, if you want. So our two main takeaways. The first one is the kind of light I use. It's a very simple butterfly light. So the first idea is to have an overhead light, and this is what we call butterfly light. Why do you want an overhead light? In sculpture, an overhead light, as you can see, it's one of the best ways to give dignity to your volumes. So this is what we want first. Find a nice overhead light. The second thing I want to add is a fill light. The fill light is nothing more than something very soft coming through, usually, the sides of the subject. Okay, so if I turn off my main light, you can see this is the fill light. Now, the second thing is gonna be the render render palette. Okay, so how do we set it up? So we have, a, we have this nice uh, single BPR render. So this BPR, so this render is the result, is mainly the result of filters, okay? Filters, which allows us to fake this sort of interesting uh, depth of field effect, uh, this little grain nosy effect allows us to give a bit more of contrast, a bit more of this butterfly light effect. How do we do that? We go up here, dock our render palette. The main thing you want to check is in render properties, and I only have shadows activated. I don't have any ambient occlusion activated. So the only two things I'm tweaking, BPR shadow and BPR filter, BPR Shadow, actually, I leave everything default, I pump the G-Strength a bit up. In this case, uh, I played with L-Depth and V-Depth to avoid having certain artifacts. But now we're, now we're coming to the important thing, which is BPR Filters. The first one I create usually is a Sharpen filter. It defaults, I just lowered it to 40%. The second filter I use is Glow. It's a very subtle change, as you can see. The third filter I use is Orton. Okay, look at what this does. This also helps to bring out to bring out the contrast a little bit. I only change the intensity of Orton. The fourth one is Blur. This is probably the most important filter you will you want to learn to use in uh, in ZBrush. And what basically this guy does. It's faking the depth of field uh, effect of the camera. Now here the filter thing starts to get a bit more complex because so the blur is increased in certain areas and decreases in other areas, the, the areas which are closer to the camera. So how do you achieve that? The way I achieve that, I usually um, use a colorized filter. The colorized filter allows you to see what's happening. Okay, so how the filter is behaving. So you see in this case, so this is actually telling us that wherever you see more green, there would be more blur. And whenever, wherever you see less green, there would be less blur, okay? And the way you play with this is mainly with the depth slides, uh, with the depth slider. You wanna go over depth A, you wanna press Alt, left click and drag, and I usually click on the area which is which is far away from the camera. And then I do the same with depth B, alt left click, and I will pick his nose usually. And depth one, you wanna put it all the way to one. 
And then you want to play with mask border. So see what happens if I play with mask border. You will see that this will give me different degrees of fading of the filter. Okay, and the same goes for these two guys, M blur and M soft. So you want to play with these guys until then you have this kind of idea. At this point, we replace colorize with our filter, with a filter that we want to really apply. And in our case, it's blur. The next filter I like to add is the noise filter before and after. And this allows us to create that kind of imperfection, the wabi sabi that we talk a lot about in our series. The next filter I use is paint. And actually, I use it very, very lightly. You'll see it's at 8%. And what it does, it actually, and I put a very light uh, tint on it, um, which gives a bit of a, a bit of a cold tint to the whole idea. And you see it softens a bit the noise. And this is something important because that noise was very harsh on itself. Uh, but I want to reduce it with a paint. Of course, this, this is just my setup. So, you know, you can tweak all these values and, and find your own. The last one is fade. Now, fade is very useful to create a sort of a vignetting effect to and to actually and to actually create an accent of the of the butterfly light. Okay, so I want to have this kind of contrast between light and dark, and you see it's all around his head. Now, something something important also is uh, with your light. My main light, in, in light properties, you want to make sure that shadow is activated in your main light. And in my fill light, I have nothing activated. The only other thing which is quite important is the background. And the way I create this is actually just by turning on and off the background in the light palette. Okay, and leaving everything at default and lowering the exposure and the gamma a little bit. Okay, this will remove that harsh, pure black this uh, and allows us to have the digital clay light setup which is this guy okay so this was supposed to be a very very short um a very very short five minutes episode i hope you enjoyed you will need to play with all the sliders and with all the values i gave i know they will not work out of the box it's impossible because you will have a different sculpture you will have a different different structure and different volumes but the stuff is all there, okay? It's everything I showed you lies in the in the two light setup, okay? The main light and the okay, the main light and the the main light and the fill light, and then in the seven filters. Thanks a lot for following, guys. Thanks a lot for the amazing feedback you're giving me on on YouTube. I'm so happy that you are discovering a new way to sculpt. I'm happy that a lot of veterans, veteran 3D artists, are able to explore a way to sculpt with more freedom. And with less concern about production techniques but more about making art if you want to be part of this change of digital sculpture and if you want to be part of the tribe of digital play just click subscribe and join us in our facebook group so i'll see you soon and keep sculpting